वांग्मे मनसी प्रतिष्ठिता मनो मे वाची प्रतिष्ठिता आवेरा वीर महे दी वेदस्यम आनी स्थाह श्रुतम मे मा प्रासी अनेना धीते ना हो रात्रान समदधामी रितम वदिष्यामी सत्यम वदिष्यामी तन्माम वतु तद्वक्तारम वतु अवतु माम अवतु वक्तारम अवतु वक्तारम ओम शांति 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 these are very charged mantras they always give as we know some new meaning even knowing this shanti part for so many years for more than 40 years i am still kind of discovering always a shade of meaning which is which is uniquely new for me for my understanding and in this this time when i was speaking it this protect me protect the speaker the speaker is the one who actually uh, uh, recites the mantras yes the hymns the speaker is the one who will read the hymns and these hymns read have to be charged with consciousness so avatu means not only protect but fill grow grow within me the flame yes uh, within me who speaks the mantra that means may my mantra be effective to the change of my consciousness this is what kind of uh, comes to me but because it can be also not totally effective but it has to to kind of in kindle uh, kindle the fire within so this is um, also very relevant to this hymn agnim dutam vrini mahe we invoke or we choose the summoner uh, the agni the summoner of the gods and the all-knowing vishvaveda son the messenger dutam the will effective of the sacrifice Asya yajnasya of this sacrifice of this transformation sukratum the effective will the perfect will of transformation agnim agnim havima bihih sada havanta vishpatim aviyavaham purupriyam to the lord of the creatures the bearer of our offerings the beloved of many to every flame the sacrifices ever call with hymns that summon the gods one in whom are many dear things and this is interesting because puru priyam shri Aurobindo translates in his own way uh, in whom are many dear things means it is through agni as the gate all the spiritual treasures come to us yes without this flame and burning within us these treasures will never be revealed to us and all the gods are coming through him yes agni is the gate for all the gods agne devan iha vaha jajnana vrikta barhishe asi hotana idiya O Agni, bring here the gods of fire, thou being born hither, bear the gods for the sacrificer who spreads the holy seed. Thou art our desirable summoning priest, Asihotana Idia. Desirable, he translates, Idia. It can be also sought with adoration, beloved priest, beloved invoker. Uh, this is um, the three 
verses that we covered and now we are going into number four which, uh, which hymn is this it's number which... 12 112 you you want to follow the i don't have book with me unfortunately just okay. to check okay. but to let me check then i may find it wait a minute then in the book it's 118 Uh, the, the page number, yes, 118? Yeah, page 118. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You can recognize by the numbers, 112, yeah? uh, Mandala 1, him 12. There must be some, I have somewhere the hymns to the mystic fire. Shall I open them? I prepared separate because I have my interpretation and the words here for you, you know, I typed yeah, it you out. Do it your way. No, you do it your way. It's mm. all right. And there is Vedic accent here, which is also very important to, to understand the meaning. Because the accent is telling you what case is there. So Tan Ushato Vibodhaya, this is a new verse. Yad agni yasi du diam de vair asatsi barheshi. O fire, when thou goest as our envoy, du diam, if when you fulfill your mm, uh, duty as our envoy, as our messenger. Awaken them up who desire our offerings. Tan ushatach, those desiring vibodhaya, you awaken. Yad agne, which to which you yasi dutiam, you go as a messenger. Devaich asatsi, take thy seat with the gods on the holy grass. Devaich asatsi, sit on with the gods on Barhishi, on the Barhis. Uh, we spoke about Barhis a bit. Barhis is that place which we prepare for the gods and for Agni, uh, for the gods to sit around Agni, around fire. Um, it's a holy grass. And Barhis from Brich to extend, to expand. I was uh, kind of interpreting it as uh, cleaning up the place or uh, vacating it from all other powers, banishing all other powers and preparing the inner space for the gods. This is something interesting about, uh, because it corresponds to what I recently thought of as peace, why peace is so important. For many people, it may look like, you know, peaceful means like no energy to live, no excitement, no adventure, you know. Peace is something like sleeping, nearly falling asleep. What's the fun in it? What's the fun in that life of peace? Yeah? But peace uh, plays a very special role. It actually works like a filter. It does not allow and the disturbing vital forces to come in into the system. So it's like a whole, withholding us back from all the troubles, troubling forces, yes, which want to enter and want to trouble us, possess us from within. All kind of thoughts, feelings, emotions, uh, you know, fears, all these forces are filtered or cast away by peace. And I think this is that that idea of barhis, extending one's inner being and getting into that st state in which only spiritual forces can enter. Spiritual forces would not enter if there is a crowded space yeah, with all other desires, fears, uh, anxieties and so on. Nobody will come into such a temple so the temple has to be cleaned and prepared and peace is to be established and only then we can expect those forces to act. And it means totally new being. It doesn't mean the boring being. 
peace is only an, a, a preparation. It's the ground on which, as on Baris, all the gods would sit around the fire and will start partaking of the offering. Yeah? There will be an excitement, a lot of joy and bliss and truth and knowledge and power. Everything comes, but from totally different source not from the source of the vital disturbance or mental dogmas. You know? It's totally different source, but the peace or that barhis is needed. That's why it is always mentioned in the Veda. Come and sit on our barhis, on our extension. Come to our peace, as it were. So these gods who desire our surrender awaken or Agni, being our messenger, sit down together with the gods you brought from above, because he always brings the gods from above or from within, in the space we have prepared for you within ourselves. And then, Dharita Havana Di Divah. Just a moment before you move ahead, yes. I have a question. I have two questions actually. Yeah. So uh, one of the first things is about stressing or the vertical marks. Uh, can you just uh, tell me a little bit about this? For example, if I had to pronounce this, I would go. I have never read this hymn before. Okay, but I would go. Tan u shato vi vod vod haya. Yadagne, Yasi, is that right? Is that is my oh, thinking right? Oh yes, uh, yes. If you if you want to uh, get the how to read the accent, it's quite simple. So when you see short vowel with yes. uh, swarita, you don't do double swarita. You do only one swarita. When you have long vowel like o, there are short and long vowels. Yeah, right. with swarita, then it is doubled. Yeah. Okay, so it will be wo o wo o dhaya. Yeah, yeah, bo dhaya, yes. Tam no ushato vivim bo dhaya yad agne ya si dutiyam. Yeah. Okay, okay, I got it. So long vowels with swarita would be extending it, stretching. Okay. Uh, let me open the other text which would give us. Uh, more precise accentuation that because um, uh, because we need to have this um, I don't see it I have to find it in another spot okay 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 uh, but uh, yes if you are asking accent it's important you want to read the, the hymn with accentuation but by the way I'm I must tell you something about accentuation then I most probably already spoke about it, but um, that um, accentuation was needed only to preserve the Udha. I, I got, I got that. I got that last time when you said that. That oh, it yeah. was actually needed to preserve in memory, but it is not exactly the right way all the time. I mean, that. No, no, it is absolutely correct for the preservation. Yeah, in the Rig Veda, at least, there is no okay. doubt. But okay. uh, um, it is not for the sacrificial reading. If you want to read, yeah, for yourself, here it is. Okay. Uh, ah, you see, Ushato. I, I missed this. Uh, the, the printing missed few. I saw that the Anudattas are missing. Tang ushato vibo odhaya yad agne ya si dutiyam. When you have uh, nasalization with short and svarita, then it is also or, or, or the underlines are missing in this uh, thing. Yeah, somehow they disappeared from the text. Okay, from the... okay we'll, we'll take it up some other on some other text then. I think that's fine. This is Let's the... go ahead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because without the underlinings, it, it is difficult to understand. No, no, it is not possible. Somehow they disappeared. I don't okay. know how they did disappear. Okay, let's go ahead. Sorry. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Good. You, you asked, you see, you corrected the text. Thank you. 
But in this other text, you will see that uh, um, the only udattas are marked, yes? Tam, ushato, vibodhaya, yad agne yasi, dutiyam, devaih asatsi, barhishi. So this is how the word was pronounced by the Vedic Rishis. Yeah, this is the precise morphological accent in the word. But this Vedic accentuation is actually uh, preserving it, pointing, because Svarita is pointing that previous was Udatta, and Anudatta points that uh, next is Udatta. Yes? So they are both pointing to Udatta from both sides. <laughs> This is how it was arranged. I, I think we'll we'll need an example which has the underlined thing. Oh yeah, right. Um, so, yes. Anyway, but we we'll take it up some other time. I all right, all right. right. So those yes, and that is the only question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You said sorry. two questions. Yeah, yeah. They right. can sorry. disappeared. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, so I was asking whether this V generally means go or movement or going. V, V, the word V. V is the prefix here. V, v Bodhaya, this one. Yeah, V Bodhaya is together with Bodhaya. V is a prefix. All the prefixes in the Vedic language are separate from the verbs. And okay. uh, which is not okay. uh, the case in classical. You see, asatsi, it's also prefix, uh, okay. and okay. v, and it can stand in any position, not necessarily in front of the um, verb. Okay. It can okay. be okay. before many words or even after the verb. And what is the purpose of this prefix? V means this movement, yeah? The movement, separation. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, separation and going into details, going into duality, expanding in space, yes? Okay. From okay. here we okay. have this uh, profound name Vishnu. Vishnu is okay. snu, is a suffix of the doer, and V is holding two in one, yes? Okay. And because Vishnu holds heaven and earth so, yeah, separately, okay. separately established. And that okay. is the explanation in Taitiriya Aranyaka of Vishnu, because he is holding two heaven and earth. He is Vishnu. Shnu is Snu, like Jishnu, the conqueror. Vishnu is the who holds two. So, okay, okay, I and, got it. Thanks. Yeah, there is also V root, which means to move. We will meet this word Viti, Vita ye. This okay. is uh, the in the next verse. Okay, okay, thank you. I think I got it. Yeah, yes, right. yes, you're welcome. Okay. You, you don't need to be apologetic. You no, always no, come right. with with questions. It's fine. Okay, it's right. fine. Okay, okay. It helps to understand the text deeper. We need deeper understanding because explanation is not enough it has to be built in language you have to feel the language yeah okay. then it stays then it explains then the vision comes so grita havana didivah pratishma rishato daha agnetvam rakshasvinaha um of fire thou who art called by the offerings of clarity, thou shining one, do thou oppose and burn down the haters that confine. There is a new characteristic, Grita Havana, so invoked or called upon by Grita. Grita is the central term in the Rig Veda, the same as Soma and Grita. These are two offerings which are making um, fire burn, yes? When we make oblation of the ghee, Grita is ghee, clarified butter, the fire burns. You saw me many times in the temples when the priests, are, Brahmins are doing this, yes? Uh, oblation of ghee into the fire, how it burns. So that is the symbolic, uh, yeah? But Shobindo says, Garita is the clarified mentality, a clarified mind, pure, uh, heated up, 
with clarity mind, mind which is nearly transformed by spiritual presence. And this is something interesting. So the fire, the, the divine will in us, is invoked by Garita. So here I give the my today's interpretation. I was just reading this before the meeting. Fire can be invoked and kindled by the offerings of mental clarity, Garita. There is a profound psychological truth expressed in this verse. To kindle the divine will in us, we must offer him the purified butter of our thinking, Garita, and emotions, Soma. This flame will not easily burn if we offer something difficult for his inflammation. We need to give him some spiritual substance, yeah? something which would give him possibility to flame and to grow. And that purified mentality in us prepared for the offering and also purified and distilled and purified the emotional part, Soma, they are making him burn in us. And then once he is burning, once he is flaming, we can offer him less digestible food. <laughs> <laughs> even even wet sticks, you know, those which are not ready to burn, he will eat them up. But at the beginning, we need to to invoke them with more subtle food, yeah? subtle in spiritual sense. And we know it, somehow psychologically we know it, that we cannot really... Uh, get into that aspiration, state of aspiration and knowledge and uh, surrendering ourselves without working out in the mind and the vital, the food for this flame to grow. It's something very psychological, very true. It will not come by itself in our, you know, difficult state of fear or anxiety. It will not be burning there. It needs nurturing. It needs um, feeding with our offerings. That's why it is here. It is to receive the offering, to transform our life. So if we are not offering him anything, so how can he really burn? And then, Agni na Agni samidhyate kavir grehapatih yuva haviyavad juhuasiyah. May I ask a question before that, Vladimir? Before yes, to... sure. So, I wanted to know what, what is said about reaching that uh, divine clarity. What is what? What? How do you reach that clarity? How do you offer that uh, grihata? How to produce the grihata? Yeah, the gi. Uh, yes, I, we are doing it all the time. We are thinking. We are searching for the truth. We are always looking for the meaning in life. Yes, and that is kind of distilling, purifying thoughts. Uh, spiritual thoughts, our meditation thoughts, our aha moments, all this is a great food for the flame to grow, for the divine will to grow in us. <laughs> That's how we are feeding him. Yeah? That sounds so cool. Thanks, Vladimir. Yes. I was thinking I have to learn something more difficult, but you said you're already doing it. That's so yeah. cool. Thank you. Yes, of course, you're doing it. And once the flame is growing, you want it to grow more. You don't want it to, to grow less. And that's what happened to you when you were left for one month. <laughs> Where is my flame? I want it back. <laughs> so let's start again, Yagya. Yeah. And... That was flame in action, Vladimir. Everything I learned had to apply for human beings. One lakh Indians, it was mind Blowing. Oh, yeah. so I just kept offering myself and offering. I forgot, like action was meditation. There was no, I had to burn as flame. That was the only way, you know. It was a 21 hour working day I had. It was crazy. So, so I shouldn't really think that I missed out, but then I missed the class a lot. Yes. 
Right, all right. I didn't mean to to this. I meant only that, yes, I just wanted to give an example that um, once uh, the, you, of course, you are feeding it with, with all your offerings. You offer more than yourself and you offer the surrounding, the, the context in which you are, the people who come to you. You create the atmosphere of this, of burning towards the truth. Seeking the truth is the fire. Huh? He's always seeking the truth. So... And when you say that later on we can add some indigestible material also, what does that mean? Well, when the flame is burning, yeah, then it's easy to take many things which were not possible to take otherwise. Yeah? So you, you find the truth in every many, many things which are kind of mundane and far away from the truth, looking far away yeah, in their form. But you find that the truth is hidden in everything, in the most mundane things. You read the newspaper and you find the truth. Yeah, that means the fire is burning already. <laughs> I I just want to say something over here, Vladimir. Yes. This paragraph that you have written, uh, uh, fire can be invoked and kindled by the offerings. So this is totally unrelated, but I just want to uh, show you. Mm -hmm. There's a book by Omram Michael Ivanov. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've heard of this. Uh, this is called uh, The Mysteries of Fire and oops, uh, Fire and Water. Wow. It's, it okay. says absolutely the same thing. Uh, so this is kind of very ancient knowledge, I think, because it has been there all over the world. Uh, the idea that you, you start off with very subtle elements which you offer, and then you can go on to burn the 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 heavier or bad things. Can you yeah. please repeat the author? Uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. Omram Mikhail Ivanov. Thank you. It's called the Mysteries of Fire and Water. Interesting, yeah, because these are two major elements in the Veda. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, even uh, uh, Gurjeev mm -hmm. has mentioned what Kinshuk uh, brought out, like. Hmm? Uh, he's an Armenian mystic. Yes, good job. Uh, I know him very oh, well. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. And that was also beautiful. And I was also wondering uh, when Rashi was asking this question, like the four levels of speech, um, it's quite possible, like if we can even handle Vaikari at whatever level, if we are slowly into that, yeah. into that zone. Right, uh, the four levels of speech in Tantra, which we looked into before, yes, Vaikari, um, as the word outside, yes, when the word outside is actually revelation from the inner expression, so it's always the case, yes, uh, if the flame is burning, that's why the fire later was identified with the word, interesting, yes, in the post-Vedic, in Brahmanic literature. And the flame and the word were kind of identified as one power because it's a self-expression of the being. In the Veda, it's a bit different in the Rig Veda. There is Brihaspati yes, in the heart. The flame is the more of Rudra's power. It is a son of Rudra. It is that aspiration in nature towards the divine. The, the divinity within the nature which is bursting through, burning through, yes, and changing all the the forms, mutating the forms, making them more supple, more uh, receptive of the divine truth. So they are becoming more and more suitable for the spirit. Yeah? So that's the work of the divine, of the fire within. But that, when it is charged with a mantra, with a word of Brihaspati from the heart, and Brihaspati is the lord of, or even the father of all the rishis, you know, seven rishis, Amgirasa rishis, are his tongues or his flames of Brihaspati. Then, once it is framed by the conscious intention, you know, 
then it reaches to heaven and then indra answers with his lightning and so agni flame from above below and lightning from above they join indragni there are hymns to indragni both of them this is the aim of the sacrifice to connect the divinity from below with the divinity from above and then all the miracles are achieved and realized here so here he is invoked by Greta he invoked and kindled by Greta this is an important the subtle food the food of spiritual kind that what we prepared for him and he has to burn also all the those who confine and those haters Rishatach and Rakshasvinach, those who obstruct our movement forward, and that spiritual flame. There are many obstructors. There are special forces which do not want this flame to burn. You know? mm. And he, they are offering them as offering to him. <laughs> so burn them, <laughs> take them as food. Oh, he would love it. He would love them as food. He doesn't mind to burn them. Only he has to be strong enough. Yeah? And then, Agni na Agni samidhyate kavir grehapatir yuva avyavad juva siyach. So by the fire, is the fire perfectly kindled? The seer, the lord of the house, the youth, the bearer of offering, whose mouth receives the offerings. The fire is kindled perfectly by the fire, for he is the seer, the master, and the inhabitant of the house, always young, bearing our call and offering whose mouth receives the offering. This mouth, it looks like, a, it's like, a, what do you call it, where you burn the fire, when you um, kind of melt the metal, that kind of, you know, this mouth is interesting because it has two, components of enjoyment also yes it enjoys the transformation of our being into the divine being so all the offerings what we offer what we offer is ourselves we offer the, our thoughts our feelings our bodies our incapacities to make them capacities we offer all this to this flame within us and he enjoys the offering enjoys the transformation and you notice every time you master some weakness in you it is a tremendous joy it's like you are getting out of sickness something like this you were a long time sick and then you became healthy you just even forgot how it is to be healthy it's that feeling uh, so, by Agni, Agni is to be totally kindled. This is also an interesting thing. So, only by the means of the divine that you can realize the divine. Uh, you, one cannot do it by other means. Yeah? It's like uh, in uh, Taitiriya, you remember, so Brahman is tapas, so realize Brahman by tapas, because Brahman is tapas. So that tapas is Agni, yes? that uh, con consciousness force, and it is by consciousness force you can realize con consciousness force. You can't realize it by some other means. Hmm? He is Kavih also, he is the seer. Shebindo translates usually Kavih as a poet, as a seer. Grihapati, uh, he is the lord of our house. This house, this body, is his house. He is the lord. He is the 
uh, the one who lives within. Otherwise, this body would not come into existence. He, he is constantly young or ever young you are because he is always of the truth. Truth is always young. It's never old. He is the carrier of Havya, of that which is offered. He is Juhuasiya. He is partaking, enjoying the offering. I spoke ab about uh, invoking an offering already in the previous session. Invoking an offering, the same root, yes? Juhoti. To make oblation to offer the as an oblation and to call yes from here hotar the invoker and the offerer so one cannot invoke someone without offering <laughs> it's not invoking <laughs> invoking is offering yes i call you because i have some food for you some feast we can sit and uh, celebrate that's how i call you i don't call you to get something from you yeah? <clears throat> so this is the idea of this root and then kavim agnim upastuhi satya dharmanam adhavare devam ami vachatanam um, the divine flame, to the divine flame, to the seer, him whose law of being is the truth, the shining one, the destroyer of all evils. Approach and chant the hymn of praise. This is Shirobinda's translation. My interpretation, in establish in yourself, or affirm rather, stuhi, affirm in yourself the flame of the divine will, who is the seer and the creator of the word. Again, the word, interesting. Um, whose law of action is that of the truth, satya dharmanam, the shining deity, removing all the obstacles ami vachadanam now interestingly devam yes the god i am translating shining deity because devam from rudiv to shine so it's a shining being luminous being we translate them as gods but they are luminous beings So to Kavi, to Agni, Upastuhi, or Kavi and Agni, you affirm within yourself. I'm taking this translation stu as uh, affirmation and establishment of the deity within ourselves from Sri Aurobindo. He says that root stu, stuti, stotram, yeah, stuhi, all these words are, stuhi is the imperative second person. So... They are from roots too, which means to affirm the divine within ourselves. And it's quite interesting because there are other roots very closely related, yes? If you analyze uh, from the point of view of the language, etymology, you will see that uh, there is root sta to stay, yeah? There are stri to, to, to stretch, the same etymology, yeah? to establish in the movement, to stretch, interesting. Ri is to move and st is to stop, to, you know, to st uh, stable, to make it stable. All the words in English are of the same kind, stables, yeah, stumble, stool, <laughs> station, and so on. Yeah? even stupid <laughs> you can see many many kind of stumbling words which are which are creating this st, yeah, etymological sense so the stuhi is of the same kind yeah establish or affirm within oneself yeah? the deity this affirmation within oneself means giving the root within oneself for this action of the divine. So having kind of a stamba in, inside oneself, which is holding the, the ground of the divine. 
Adhavade, interesting word, we already spoke about it. It's the, the journey, journey sacrifice, because it is viewed as a constant journey. It's constant moving forward. Sacrifice is not something done and finished. It's done and again done and again has to be done and again you have to move and do it all the time. You cannot stop. Yeah, it's, uh, it's dynamic. It's on the move because time moves us forward. We have much to do. There is a whole infinite ocean of inconscient which has to be transformed and it is waiting for us. So our journey is needed. <laughs> we have to go ahead and receive more and more darkness, more and more unregenerated things into ourselves and transform it through ourselves. We are the transforming station here. And Agni is uh, our guest in our home or the spark we are the spark of this deity so we are doing his work we are yajamana he is yajamana within us our soul and then i have a question Radhi. yes uh, when you say that we are constantly doing is this the work referred to by sri krishna in the gita that we have to be constantly working there's no point absolutely very nice lovely yes this is the same in isha upanishad yeah. yes but one must do here verily works what works work karma is actually in the vedic terms it is the sacrifice yes there is no other work we have no other work to do here, only one work. It is the transforming the unregenerated, uh, darkened nature by the light of higher consciousness. And that's why we are working. Yeah? We are doing, we are constantly bringing in this light, inner light into this uh, uh, gross matter, which is becoming more and more supple and receptive of the light that's why we are working <laughs> that's why there is constant movement in time time is pushing all of us we cannot stop you know? if we stop time will push us this is something interesting you some of you may have felt this push of time yes even if you want to stop it you can't you will have to get up and go and do something and continue and continue and continue. You do many, many stupid things. Also, we do many stupid things, but eventually we find our way out. We meet all the obstacles. We deal with all the obstacles. Yes. Is this the moment towards Ritam and Satyam that they talk about? This journey? Yes, rhythm, absolutely, the dynamic truth, the truth in, uh, in movement, in becoming, because there is truth of being and truth of becoming, absolutely. So the truth of becoming is to remove the obstacles, to change them, to transform them, to burn them, and that's why we have our amiva chatanam, the one who chases away, who uh, hides who causes the obstacles move away yeah the suffering move away where everything moves away with with the progression of this flame within us with the growth of the flame my god we just don't know what we are really <laughs> when i think of it it's such a powerful thing we are the flame and we can make this flame grow and then we are totally happy and totally fulfilled and realized in our life the lesser truths would not satisfy our our being here only this this is totally satisfactory the flame this is the love meaning of love meaning of truth meaning of uh, knowledge power everything in one go in one flame and then 
jaz tva magneha višpatih, du tam deva sa par jati. Tas jaz ma pravi ta bhava. The shining of flame, a divine messenger, the Lord of the offerings, who waits on thee, of him become the protector. The Lord of the offerings who waits on thee. This is an interesting turn of the usually Havishpati, the one, the Lord of Havich. And so I got this uh, idea. Uh, so my interpretation, O oh, shining God, the Lord of offering who makes you, oh, Agni, his messenger to the gods, take him, uh, the offerer, under your intensive protection and care. Rut Av, we have this Av all the time, Avatumam, yes, I spoke about this at the beginning. Um, in this pravitri, uh, pravitri pra av, yes, root with pra prefix forward. And the protector, as Sri translates, and care, can be also translated from Sri Aurobindo, I am taking this meaning, growing and filling from within, from root u. U has this extension or filling the space, avatu, avatu mam, yeah. fill my inner space. So we can translate the line as fill the one with your presence and power, the one who is the Lord of the offering or who made himself an altar for transformation. This word, havishpatim, havishpatih, the Lord of the offering, why the Lord is used? Because that means the person is totally living only for one reason for the growth of consciousness. He made himself an altar for constant transformation. He is the Lord of every offering. It's like the mother in Sri Aurobindo, let us say. So a constant, non-stop, uh, uninterrupted offering to the divine, everything what comes in. So Vladimir, are, is it like something that you choose or is it something that you're chosen for? It is something that you choose. You choose to be this, once you choose to be this, he prays, please fill him, the one who offers everything to you, fill with your presence, grow within him forward, pravita, become the forward growing power of him. Because, why forward? Because it's a constant journey. It's again and again has to be done. So. And why protector? Why become the protector? But why this is feeling from within is protecting. Protecting against all the obstacles which are preventing us from growing. This is the protector. Uh, but at the same time, didn't you say that, you know, it's like whenever we uh, conquer something, we, uh, you know, uh, break a barrier, we, we kind of uh, uh, battle with the uh, obstacle and come on the other side, we also grow. So all the obstacles are actually little instruments of our own growth and development. So then why do we need protection from that? <laughs> protection is the uh, contextual meaning of the word the central meaning would be growing within feeling fulfilling our inner being or in our outer self fulfilling us once you are fulfilled you are protected protection is actually a super it's kind of peripheral meaning yeah, in a way once you're full, there is no gap that these forces can come in. You're protected. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. I mean, I, I, I thought in terms of healing work, when, we, when I do the healing thing, then we ask for protection because, again, things can come or whatever. I don't know. 
So yeah. like then, then I understand, but I didn't look at, I didn't think of it as an obstacle that way. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, they, you are right. Way. You are right. Absolutely, there are several roots which mean different things, and they are all translated as protecting. <laughs> For example, there is another root, rakshati. Rakshati is protecting also, but it is scaring away. You know, from here, rakshas, to scare. Yeah. Um, you see these rakshasas on the uh, these uh, uh, lorries at the back, yeah? Why they, they draw these uh, strange figures with tongue and with, uh, you know, claws and so on, with teeth. Yeah, Vladimir, I'll show you right now. See? <laughs> okay. Yay, you have them, yes. This is my entrance. <laughs> He is the protector. Protector in what way? He scares away other forces that they should not enter. Yeah? That's why they draw this on Lori or on the corners of the temples. You see these creatures. They are protecting the temples in his side. Yeah? This is also protecting. And in that sense, you are thinking protecting. This root of is not protecting in that sense. It's rather feeling fulfilling and thus protecting. Yes, 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 I understand. Not scaring away. They just cannot enter because the he is there. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, it's important to see the, the, what the words mean in, in etymological sense. What Sri Aurobindo does for us, he gives us the keys. And then we can understand better why these words are used. And uh, very gracious, are very conscious of the usage of the words. And uh, okay, we did this uh, verse, yes. So Havishpati is the one who constantly offers everything of his life to the Lord. And so make, fulfill him, fill him with your presence, yeah, forward. Not just fill him for now, forward, forward means fill him for the next steps and next steps which are coming. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Vladimir, so basically here, Havishpati is waiting on Agni and offering to the Grihapati. Is is that how I would interpret it? That the Yajimar yeah, yeah. inside is, is offering. Yeah. Okay. And interestingly that Pati is used because it's not really proper to use for Myself. Havishpati. Yeah? It, okay. it makes him as if a deity. And there is a subtle meaning of this deity in Pati, um, meaning that this Havishpati is actually the one Yajamana, the soul within. Yes? Okay. It is only him who could be Havishpati, because our outer being cannot be. Yeah? Our mental, vital, and physical nature is too involved in the outer things. Too many energies are not of the divine origin there. They are still to be recovered. So Havishpati can be only a Yajamana in a way. So Yajamana is waiting for the action, for the fulfillment of the divine will, <laughs> offering everything to the divine will. This is interesting. Yeah, so kind but, of... but this Yajamana is essentially much more closer to myself. Yes, it, it is it's, the it's spark more of closer Agni. to my, my yes. personality rather than. Yes, it is Agni who is actually doing the sacrifice. Yeah? Okay, 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 right. Who is who is calling to Agni to to flame and to fulfill? <laughs> it's okay. like, it's um, it is it is actually the very gist of all the spiritual uh, uh, kind of um, experience. Uh, you remember this mantra, Brahmar Panam Brahma Havir Brahma Gnau Brahma Nahotam from the Gita. So it is Brahma who is offering, yes? Brahma Agni, Brahma is oblation, Brahma is the result of the realization. It's all done by the inner being. The whole yoga is done by the inner self, by the divine within us. It is the divine who is calling for the divine. Yeah? So for the divine to without, from within, calling. So these forces which come, they start changing our surface nature, which we offer. But the offering is, can be done only by the inner being. It cannot be done by the outer. Or by the 
parts of the outer being which is already which are already uh, becoming aware of the inner presence they want it and they start kind of doing this work of the inner self so it's all done by the divine within us and somewhere the mother also says one day you will realize that the whole yoga is done by me in you <laughs> but you'd think that you are doing it yes <laughs> okay thank you this Havish Pati has that kind of, you know, yes, imprint of, of that is the Lord within does the work. It is he who is calling the transformation and doing the offering. Mm. And then... Uh, One, uh, so the inner being which, is, uh, which wants to reach uh, the divine above uh, in being, that fire is there, it helps in this reaching now. Fire is the medium. I, I, uh, your voice is breaking, I couldn't hear you. That's why I switched off this one to see you at least. Maybe. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, so the, the inner bee, when it's trying to reach out to the divine above, then the fire is the medium. So the role of Agni is to be the medium for yeah it is mind. it is the medium and the means and the goal actually <laughs> but well it's difficult to understand that that is the goal because um, because once it is achieved we understand that everything do is done by fire and fire brings all the powers from above through through himself to the surface yes it's the gateway for all the devatas he comes here with the gods he sits around and transforms our being with other higher powers but he has to bring them down yeah? so he is the means and the goal uh, and that is for our mind is a bit confusing here. Yeah. Like seed of the psychic, I mean seed of like how there's seed in the mango, similarly seed of the psychic. Yes, like psychic being which is growing. Yes, psychic becomes comes to the front, and then it enlarges itself to the to the whole universe, embraces the whole all the powers divine powers and then it even becomes greater than that and goes to the transcendental realm to ananda and brings the satchit ananda powers into the play of manifestation and still it is the psychic being still it is the one who does all and is the aim of this manifestation and creation and this is the the puzzle of of the whole thing for the mind but once we solve this puzzle once we see the whole process there is no more question i think that after these answers there are no questions asked <laughs> only the the yoga is to be done the flame is to 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 be nurtured and the the place is to be prepared the forces are to be invoked we are here only to invoke, to invoke and to give, to give to this transformative process all ourselves. And this is the, the aim of life. There's not much more to do. Okay, uh, we can stop here today. It's a good uh, soft moment to stop. Uh, it's 11 o'clock. Great. Yeah, somebody. I just wanted to uh, say that what if uh, we forget to get in touch with the Agni? How do we sort of call it back? Like, yeah. So that's what we are doing. We are becoming aware. We have to prepare that's this food. We are preparing this kind of garita, you know. And Vedas are helping us to prepare the garita, the food for fire. And then we feed him and he grows slowly in us. That's where in the body? Like in the, where in the body? Mm. It's in the heart. Uh, it's also above the head. It's in the third eye. It's in, in each 
level and each chakra you can find him burning um it depends where you where you are now where are you in which part of the body are you <laughs> it's consciousness pervading all huh in the chest moreover like i think where it's more difficult there it's more easier in the chest yeah many people feel it exactly here plexus solaris even if in, if you try to touch your plexus solaris you will feel that's very sensitive even physically sensitive it's interesting that even our physical body is it's like electrical station here of the whole system and the flame is there deep deep you go deep within and there will be a flame and that flame is that Agni, Idya, Priyaha, Beloved One. Um, all right, we stop here then. I will close with mantra. Om. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Can you imagine we would not have a Rig Veda? What would happen to this world? <laughs> we would never know that this, who we are, you know. All this knowledge which came later, came from the Veda. It's just interpretation in different wording, in different systems, in different minds of the same knowledge. <laughs> Flame within seeking its own realization in in this world the divine is expanding and taking over all our manifestation what we are on the surface and we are growing into him and there is no way out even if we refuse to do it the nature will do it as Sri Aurobindo says the nature is his power who is doing the work but it will take longer time. <laughs> Great. Okay, so see you then. Namaste. All the best.